we've been talking about that quite a little bit actually and uh, the John Hackett JH Performance Ducati Coventry setup managed by Ken Foley uh, is a really really good clean team and Matt Llewellyn's been done a lot of work this year Matt Llewellyn his uh, uh, technician Jason Jones uh, used to be mechanic to Michael Rutter I think uh, a year or two ago and Matt Llewellyn they didn't quite get the bits this year um, quick enough a bit like the Monster Mob uh, 749 Ducati they just didn't get the bits that they needed yeah I'm sure he is Scott Smart can you do the double that's the question I'm certainly going to be trying hard this is where I won my first ever 250 race and I did the double that weekend so we'll do what I can do but I've got some good tires I've got the same tire that John Reynolds ran at Brands Hatch which is a bit of a special rear tire which I'm not supposed to tell you and uh, hopefully that'll work unless it dries out lots in which case it might be a problem but at the moment it's looking pretty ominous for the rest of the race it's looking okay yeah it's dry and the temperature's certainly up a little bit isn't it so uh, good luck yeah but there's a lot of standing water and there's some streams running across so it's gonna dry but it's not gonna dry as quickly as the first race well <laughs> I hope <laughs> All will be revealed very, very soon. OK, so second row of the grid here. Uh, let's have a quick word with Sean Emmett, because, of course, Sean retired in race one. Uh, Tommy Hill had a bit of an incident in front, so it was bad luck, wasn't it, that one, Sean? Um, yeah, it was, that's the way it goes sometimes. You've got to take it off with a smooth. But, yeah, it was unfortunate um, racing incident, and I had nowhere to go. So, yeah, hopefully make amends now. OK, thank you. Right, we're going to try and hurry along slightly because we know that uh, the guys don't want to waste too much time here on the grid. Let's have a quick word here with uh, Gary Mason because, Gary, you got off to a flying start, didn't you, in that first race, but you dropped back a bit. Yeah, got it. I uh, gambled on full watts. Uh, I'm quite happy I brought it home in six, really, on full watts because, obviously, it was a case of stopping on because, obviously, your tyres start falling to bits uh, when you're on nobblies and... No, I'm just um, devastated. Last minute decision, I went, no, full works, it's going to rain, and it didn't. Could have gone either way, couldn't it, really? Everyone could have gone, oh, he made the right decision, but sadly it weren't for me. You know, I thought, I knew I was on full works, so I got my head down at the start, tried to make a bit of a break, but he just dried so fast. And well, let's hope you get another good start off the line, eh? Yeah, definitely, thank you. Cheers, Gary. OK, and John McGuinness. Now, of course, he was going so well in race one. So let's find out what happened, because we, we didn't manage to do that. John, what happened? We saw you kind of pushing the bike, frantically trying to get it going again after the hairpin. Yeah, just pushing hard all the way. Just try, It was in a nice rhythm, and uh, everything seemed to be going OK. Conditions were tricky. And I just went into the hairpin like every other lap, and the front tire just folded under, and uh, I just kept hold of the bike, lifted it up as fast as I could, but I just couldn't restart it. I was pushing and pushing with my, all my heart and I couldn't get it going again. So, But, you know, it's such a fine line around here to, to being on the top step and being 12th or 13th. And I, you know, I wanted to be on the podium and I was trying really hard. Well, it's the worst spot as well to, to you know for the bike to slip, wasn't it? Because it's uphill. That's right, yeah. I mean, maybe I'll have to get to the gym a bit now, a bit more now and I would have been able to push it up there a bit faster, but I just couldn't push it. I was, uh, And uh, that was the end of that. But you were going all right, so I guess you haven't made any changes? No, I've just got a wet tyre in the rear, in the first one with an intermediate rear tyre, so, yeah, full wet, and let's see how we go, it's just going to be one of them, one of them races, I think. <laughs> no doubt. Cheers, John. OK, let's move on to the first row of the grid now, and uh, let's head for James Hayden, because, of course, he got a cracking result there in race one. And he's just taking a, a little sip here. I'll tell you what, I'll go around here. It looks like he's getting some uh, few words of advice from uh, his mechanic. James, have you changed anything for the second race? Uh, yeah, we just softened it off a bit, and obviously we're on full wet, so we just have to wait and see how that goes. Now you, again, like Gary Mason, got a cracking um, uh, away from the start here, so what, what line are you going to take? Uh, hopefully the fast line, which is going to be... Uh, <laughs> and the dry one. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's all pretty much the same. We just head out and try and get a good line to the first corner. All right, good luck, James. Thanks. OK, and uh, let's move on now to uh, the man next door, Michael Rutter, of course. Here he is. Now then, um, Michael, what happened to you in race one? You were like 19th. Michael, can you hear me under there? What happened in race one? Tell us, you dropped back to like 19. Yeah, just um, took a few laps, took about seven or eight laps for the tyres to come in, and uh, once they came in, I think it went for you know wet front as well, and by the time the rear came in, the front went off. Good so up, just one of those things. Excellent. OK, well, that's it now. They're clearing us off the line here. So we've got 30 laps to go on this very damp track. Let's hope these boys have made the right tyre choice. Keith, Neil, it's over to you. Thank you very much, Louise. So, we look up on the grid then. It's designated a wet race, which means they won't be stopping it if we get any more precipitation, as they say. This line was actually right on top of the, the start finish, right on top of the crown of the track, but it has been moved back, so yeah, you're right. First into the hairpin's the way to go. 
little bit of tyre warming going on there. Bit of a burnout from Yukio Kakayama. Red flag up as they come under orders. And uh, this is going to be a bit of a cracker. They're all on wet tyres. The track is absolutely wet. No dry lines just yet as they warm up. They are ready to start. Race two, great start. Nobody sideways. Look at James Hayden forcing Rutter across the track. James Hayden trying to get the power on a muscle Rutter out of the way. But it's Yukio and Reynolds who get the best start. I'll tell you what, Hayden really was not letting Reynolds have that space at all. Hayden drops back to third place. But Reynolds, oh, Reynolds and Hayden stuck together. Push up Bart. Whatever it takes to get by. James Hayden is determined not to let Yukio Kagayama out of his sight. So up and over the chicane at Glen Barrigal we go now and onto the Brabham Strait, up towards the Clark Curve, this right-hander, Yukio. Then it's Hayden, James Hayden, his wife Jo is in pit lane, waiting for him, John Reynolds, his wife Shelley's there as well. Then it's Michael Rutter, he's here on his own, Sondrian stayed at home. But Rutter in fourth place as Hayden looks for the inside line on the brakes. Neil McKenzie, James Hayden has come Hayden out of the box lining. Rutter's weight and Reynolds is underneath them there. So Rutter stays fourth, Reynolds in third place at the minute, then it's the Kawasaki of Scott Smart back in fifth place behind Michael Rutter on bike three. 36, James Hayden on the Virgin Mobile Yamaha. Looks to the inside through that absolute river that I was talking about. The water clearing nicely from these full wet tyres. And again on the inside, he loves that part, doesn't he? A McIntyre. McIntyre. Yeah, exactly where he passed John Reynolds. I'll let you have a go, shall I, Neil? I'm enjoying this too much. <laughs> I'm on every bike with every rider here. That is a good spot to pass, certainly in the opening laps before the riders get get settled down, down Duffer step, round the left-hander then, just nick under there at McIntyre's and you can do a bit of a block pass. Yuki is not going to get down the inside there, going down to the chicane, so a nice clean pass from James Hayden. Well, he's away with it at the front. I cannot imagine what will happen if we have a Virgin Mobile Yamaha race win here, because Roger, Rob Mack and the rest of the team, they've had a hard old year, really. They uh, started the season with... Oh, oh someone's down at the hairpin. No, he wasn't. He was someone oh. behind us. It was, yeah, a, it was a Yamaha. It was a Yamaha, you're right. And that's a soft flash of red. A soft flash of red. So number six. Gary Mason. Gary Mason comes down. James Hayden still out front, though. And, oh, it sweeps across the nose oh, of Yuko Kagayama. Yeah, but he was off line completely into that turn. He was really on the inside line, which threw him out to the outside of the track. And he's paid dearly with that. Mike Rutter made the most of that into McIntyre's. Well, not oh, like yeah. uh, John Reynolds made a fair bit. Sorry, Glenn, you can have a go too. Yeah, I sort of had the feeling that uh, we're going to see something good from James Hayden, just from his body language at the end of that first race. And uh, you can just tell he was well up for it. And, uh, you know, he, he, he's I think he's going to have a good go in this race. And the boys are going to have a hard time with him, I reckon. Yeah, well, just as he's actually eased away on that, that's a bit of a sad sight to see. Gary Mason winded there, the hairpin, the safety car, the pace car is out now. That will mean that they'll all slow up behind it. And that work that uh, James Hayden has done to actually eke out a small lead over the followers, look at that water there, is going to be for now because when they come around next time, they will have to form up behind the pace car. Scott Smart is still back there in fourth, fifth place at the moment. But James Hayden is your race leader, but he will see the... The red cross on the white flag, which will mean the safety car is out and they will now have to follow that safety car around this racetrack. Now, <laughs> I have to come back to my uh, resident expert here, Mr McKenzie. I remember that uh, in dry conditions we had a situation with uh, in the British Supersport race at Brands Hatch when Carl Harris was uh, leading that behind the pace car. The temperature of those tyres dropped so dramatically. And the first thing you said, hardest thing on a restart, is the amount of uh, heat in a front tyre. And straight away on cue, Carl Harris throws it up the road. What about wet tyres? Obviously, they need some heat. But... Same. Exactly the same. Both front and rear as well. These tyres would just be nicely up to temperature. The guy's getting a bit of a rhythm going. But now they're slowing down and they're, and they're splashing through some cool water. The temperature's dropping on the tyres, so for the first lap after the safety car goes in, they have to be so careful. There is a safety car. When the lights go out, that means it's coming in. Uh, so it will turn the lights out as soon as uh, race director Stuart Higgs gives a signal. Lights have gone out, so at the end of this lap, that pace car will come in and uh, we will be back under starter's orders. And the fact of the matter is, James Hayden, although he's lost that advantage that he had, the fact is that he has the drive of the, well, basically the control of the way this race is restarted. No one is allowed to pass anybody until they get over the start line. So in other words, as they drive up the hill, James Hayden will be able to drive at the pace he wants to until he wants to squirt it. So it's going to be a bit of, bit it's of a, a tricky smart... one. Yeah, it is a tricky it is one. It's a tricky one because there's not a lot of distance between the hairpin and the start finish and the finish line. So he really has to be smart has to time it properly. Yeah, because if JR holds back a little bit yeah. and Hayden doesn't excel it, then JR can slingshot him over the top of the hill.
It's going to be an interesting situation. Well, like I say, we've got Neil McKenzie here with us as usual. Glenn Richards has uh, come along at the moment. Now, we'll have to, what's up with Emmett's bike? I'm told that uh, from one of our camera positions that his bike sounds uh, like it's missing and um, popping a little bit. Now, nobody likes to be running quite slowly on these bikes, of course. You can see them gathering up yeah, there. Everyone wants to everybody. get the best, the best drive on here. Here we go. James then. Hayden, it's a drag line and James Hayden nails it. JR nails it. Russell does as well. And they've broken away a little bit from the man that's in fifth place. That's Scott Smart. Scott Smart might pay for that with Sean Emmett looking at the inside at the minute. But into turn one, 36, James Hayden from two. John Reynolds from three. Michael Rutter from 71. Yukio Kagayama from 88. The green Hawk Kawasaki of Scott Smart being chased down by number five, the monster mob Ducati of Sean Emmett, who we... Uh, May have heard just a slight misfire from as he was going round on those slow laps behind the pace car, but we'll wait and see how that develops. McGinnis back in seventh place, Dean Thomas back in eighth place, Tommy Hill back in ninth place at the moment. Up and over the hill onto his lops, along the back straight now, down towards Taylor's. Well, I'll tell you what, James Hayden at the minute, he has a bit of a name for a man who throws it through the fence a little too often. That seems to be in the past. James Hayden has gone about his uh, resurgent British Superbike Championship aspirations very, very steadily this year, built on meeting to meeting to meeting. And he really has matured superbly well. Well, I think he's played it perfectly this year. And he said he's changed his attitude and he's changed his lifestyle. He's changed everything for the better. He's, he's played it nice, just learning to ride this bike, getting his fitness back up to speed and, and getting confidence on the Virgin Yamaha. And, and you can see now this weekend, He's came good, second place in the first race, and he's been confident from the start of this race, both in dry and wet conditions. I was uh, having a chat to James earlier in the weekend, uh, as I have done all this weekend, talking to lots of people, and uh, he uh, said they've, they've changed the swing up pivot position, I think they've raised it, and they've also done some work with the rear suspension, uh, and he's feeling a lot more at home on the bike, and, and as we're seeing at the moment. I think what happened with the Yamaha is that it came out of the box, wasn't quite the motorcycle they expected it to be. They changed a whole load of things a little bit too quickly. The uh, other end of the coin is your team, Glenn, if I may be so bold as to say. Stuart Hickin, one thing at a time, one foot in front of the other. They got that ZX10 slowly but surely getting better. I think everybody rushed at this Yamaha early on. And there's Joe, uh, James's wife. And I think they rushed a little bit at the Yamaha, but then they steadied themselves up, realised what they've got to do step forward slowly but surely James came on board when Steve Plater was injured and now the whole development is moving forward with some momentum I, I think the bike has always had the horsepower so they've just struggled getting the, getting the power to the ground and, uh, and they've been doing a lot of work on the engine, engine management and the, and the power delivery and uh, it obviously can't be too bad because he's leading in a wet race so the power delivery must be sorted now well, power delivery was, of course, the key as far as the Rizzo Suzuki's were concerned as well. Once upon a time, you just couldn't nail it to the floor, but uh, that seems so dim and distant in the past, I must say, because the GX8000 now works absolutely superbly well. Engine management, when you've got 200 odd horsepower available, is everything, isn't it, Neil? It certainly is, and you can see that it's not just a case of them killing the power, because we know John Reynolds Suzuki is very fast, but John Reynolds can't make any ground on him up to start finish straight there as they come out of the hairpin. Hayden's bike just stays, keeps that nice gap in front of number two, JR. We're on lap nine of the shortened race distance. It was shortened first thing this morning because the weather forecast was not particularly good, back to 25 laps. But uh, I think we are going to have a bit of a cracker here. I've got to say it's building quite nicely between these two, isn't it? And uh, Rutter still there to pick up the pieces, although, again, seemingly just a fraction off the pace of the front runners again. Yeah, John Reynolds there, he's just stuck in the fastest lap. He does look comfortable while Michael Rutter's just losing a little bit of ground at the back there. In the open laps, Michael Rutter seemed quite comfortable hanging on to the back of JR. Still a long, long way to go in this. Hayden, Reynolds, Rutter, Kagayama still fourth, Smart in fifth place, Sean Emmett still in sixth place, John McGuinness still in seventh place, and Tommy Hill in eighth. Best of the privateers is James Ellison on the Gentin Racing R1 Yamaha. There is... Uh, Scott Smart coming through on 88, but this is 36, James Hayden, and two, John Reynolds at McIntyre's. Actually, there's some great names around this race circuit. There certainly is coming up to the chicane here, and you can see him get over the paint on the left side there, and that's fine in the dry. You can actually get on the throttle there and drive yourself through the chicane, but when it's wet, you have to either go through with a partial throttle or a closed throttle, because that is like ice to the painted kerb on the left side of the chicane. It scares the life out of me every time I see it happen. Tommy, oh, Hill. Tommy Hill down on the ground.
again. He was in race one. That time he and Sean Emmett came together and Emmett went down with him. This time, looks like Tommy Hill's on the... He's had a miserable, miserable time in Scotland. He really has. The 19-year-old's got a stinking rotten cold and uh, what a stinking rotten weekend for him. John Reynolds looking very comfortable yeah. here behind James Hayden. You can see how close he was to him at the hairpin. Absolutely incredible the way that he's just sitting there. Yellow flag out of McIntyre's now. That must have been where uh, Tommy Hill went down. And the run up to the chicane. Now, I love this bit of the track. It's great fun to ride in the dry, but uh, as Neil's already mentioned, paint and water and rubber. No, it makes it. It's, good. it's OK in the way. Once you've sussed out where the water's streaming across the track, it's actually quite grippy, and it's really good fun, for example, around this long left here. The bike's trying to get sideways all the time, just in case of controlling the throttle. It looks quite dramatic, standing at the side of the track, but it is good fun. Interesting there to see Reynolds staying on the relatively dry line coming into that uh, braking area, whereas Hayden was sticking on the uh, inside of the track and staying in the depth. Well, JR had some problems with his rear tyre, Brad's hatch, in the dry conditions. The wet tyre didn't really cope as well as it could have done. I would imagine Hayden's maybe on the more standard wets, which do actually quite like the dry conditions and work okay, but JR, if he's got that soft rear on, he'll want to try and keep it quite cool. Well, that was my point, because it's uh, Reynolds who's staying on the dry stuff, and Hayden, who should have the tyres that work better on the dry stuff, he's in the wet. While I was uh, actually on the grid, uh, James Hayden was tossing up between the soft wet and the hard wet, so uh, I don't know what he's got on, but I, I assume he's got the soft wet on, Neil. I would assume he has, then, the same as Scott Smart. You can see them just getting under Kyle Price there. 43. James Hayden got under him nicely, JR got held up a little bit at Clarks. 43, Carl Bryce of course did lead the R6 Cup Series this year until he opted to move up into the Superbike class on the Branson's bike. Um, but uh, Carl Bryce finding himself lapped after half distance here then at Knock Hill. But Hayden, due to that little bit of a snag for John Reynolds passing Carl Bryce, has had a little bit of an extended lead over the line but I feel like it's a false advantage at this point. This is where we'll see if John Reynolds has got anything in hand, because he's lost about half a second here, and we'll see if he can pull that back. Still it is James Ellison that leads the Superbike Cup Privateers part of this section. Uh, remember, this is uh, a race within a race. The Superbike Cup boys are going for their own championship, and it is pretty prestigious to win. James Ellison on the Gentian Yamaha at the moment, having had an awful qualifying period, an awful time indeed. I was speaking to his mechanics this morning and they said to me that uh, they really were praying for rain. They had a great rain setup, but an absolutely horrible dry weather setup, and they were absolutely right because he leads uh, the Superbike Cup Series in the rain here. You can see the tracks drying out now. It's almost a dry line. There's very little standing water at any of the corners, only really into turn one where, where you turn right after the start finish. So track is drying. There's some water splashing there and then just here turning into corner. But pretty much everywhere else, it's, it's dry. We know like wet tyres don't like the dry lines. Looks like JR's caught up quite easily, Neil. Oh, yeah. so, uh, he just looks so smooth in the wet. He's, he's just awesome, isn't he? Never. Yeah, but it's, Sean, it's Sean Emmett that's got the fastest lap of the race at the moment. Sean, Sean Emmett back Emmett. in fourth place. His bike might just work a little bit better in these conditions. You never really know now. The, the four-cylinder guys have got such good engine mapping adjustments they can dial a bike in for pretty much any conditions. But Sean Emmett is certainly working well at the back there. It's well, he's come through. He's come through tremendously. Kagiyama. Yeah, Sean Emmett is doing a brilliant job. He's come up past Kagayama, he's past Scott Smart, he's past John McGuinness. All those guys were in front of him at one part of this race. So Emmett now working his way through. And there is plenty of time, depending on his tyre choice, of course, so Hayden comes to the line. I'll tell you what, it's not going to be long before John Reynolds makes a pass. It just feels like he uh, has that extra pace. Still Rutter in third place on bike number three, the HM look at Sean Emmett. Blade. Look at Sean Emmett, he's right behind JR. No, Apologies, no, Michael Rutter. On, I Michael see Rutter. a bike. Yeah. <laughs> Get Careful. carried away. He's not going that fast. Telepathy by Neil McKenzie. <laughs> Unfortunately, an inaccurate uh, prediction at this point. Yeah, JR really yeah. wide then. They JR the down, front there. Yeah, down in the dip, the front end just tucking out from under him a minute, and that's given Rutter an opportunity to close in. Michael Rutter did say that the Michelins took a little longer to come to him in race one. Oh, dear me, that did go out from under him, didn't it? Bit of a wiggle there there's, just as he uh, turned in. There's a bit of stuff that gets put down uh, from the cars through that dip there, and uh, it's always a slippery part of the track. Now, Michael Rutter, back to what I was saying, basically said that his tyres did not come to him in race one until much later on, slap six or seven, I seem to remember him saying. Well, certainly now, the Michelins seem to be coming into their own. Working with JR, I know one thing that freaks him out. If he's riding a consistent lap time and suddenly the rear goes or backs in, 
that he doesn't like. If it was a mistake he made, it would be OK, but if suddenly the bike's doing something it wasn't doing the previous lap, then that makes him a little bit nervous. Well, Michael Rutter ain't scared. He's right, yeah, yeah you're right. Struggling, he's struggling, Jeff. struggling there at McIntyre's for sure. That, again, didn't look too good for me. And uh, Rutter is the man looking most likely to make a pass on JR. Just when we thought JR was the man that was going to go for Hayden, it wasn't. So, we're into Clark Curve and then out onto his lops. Well, this is another one of those races where, you know, you can't predict, can you, what's going to happen. We still have quite a long way in this race to go. We're on lap 16 of the 25. Uh, Sean Emmett just stuck in another fastest lap. Exactly what I was going to say. I think he made up nearly a second on that last lap, so um, he's definitely the man on the move at the moment. There is Neil Tuxworth. That is Paul Denning. We come to the start of lap 17. There is enough time for Sean Emmett to win this race. Well, what a, what a ride that would be for Sean. I mean, he is an unusual man, there is no doubt about that. He re there he is, he really is a player. Five, then, is the Monster Mob Ducati of Sean Emmett. He certainly has the talent to pull it off. It's always a question of whether he wants to and what kind of mood he's in when he gets on the bike. But uh, today, he's come here in racer's mood. Obviously miffed at being knocked off in race one. He collected Tommy Hill when Tommy fell in front of him. And uh, not too happy about that, Sean Emmett. He called it a racing incident, which of course is exactly what it was, but it still wouldn't have pleased him <laughs> too this much. This is about to turn into a four-way battle for the win. Aiden leads, Reynolds second, Rutter third, but a closing Sean Emmett in fourth place is what we've all got our eyes on here, as have the sodden Scots that are watching at trackside. They really are heroes. They stayed here with us all day long they've been queuing since i came into the track at 8 30 this morning and uh, big crowd and it's been raining virtually all day okay kageyama down in fifth now kawasaki's struggling a little bit this time out smarts two seconds behind kageyama and six and his teammate john mcginnis he's six seconds behind smart in seven no problem for james hayden out front on the virgin mobile yamaha but he's still got to hang on in there because really the storm is brewing behind him I think Reynolds is about spent now, he seems to have done his bit. I think that's his pace, it's Sean Emmett that's got something in hand here. He's got half a second, seven tenths of a second every lap of these guys. It'll be interesting to see if Michael Rutter, just running a little bit hot in there as well, so maybe Rutter's on the limit of adhesion too. But uh, Emmett has closed up, and of course, every time he gets a little bit closer, it'll give him that extra encouragement to push just a fraction harder, harder, harder. Interesting to see how easily he can make a pass. Hayden was out a little bit hot there. He was out a little <laughs> bit on the wide line. I think Hayden had a little bit of a mistake. He just lost some time. Yeah. yeah, he definitely lost some time. Down the dip, up towards the hairpin. Hayden, Reynolds, Rutter, that's our top three. Emmett has come to join the party. Kagayama has slipped back now by a country mile. Scott Smart just a couple of seconds behind Kagayama. So plenty of work to be done, but all of the interest is here. The fourth bridge in the background there, you can see. Now the sky has cleared all around the Firth of Fourth here just north of Edinburgh. It looks uh, pretty much like there's a dry line around most of the track. It's just yeah. got a couple of horrible rivers there. And again, Rutter out wide then. Rutter yeah. again finds himself in a bit of a mistake. I think his tyres are done too. I reckon the Michelin front wet struggles in dry conditions, more so than the Dunlops. Well, certainly he ran on wide when he asked to tip it in. It didn't tip in and he had to go on a bit. It's held, oh, up, Emmett. Close. Yeah, it's held up Emmett a little bit there because Emmett was really running at him so uh, Emmett's gonna have to wait for another half a lap before he can put a pass on Rutter I suspect he'll put that on him at the hairpin providing he's close enough well, I think if he can get a drive out of the chicane he's got he's got a chance of getting up into Clark's because that's where Michael Rucker much Rutter struggles to turn the front his front which then I think uh, he's Rennett's too far not back close enough he's yet. gonna have to be right on him if he's gonna do that and be driving out of the chicane still it is Hayden that leads on the Virgin Mobile Yamaha over John Reynolds on the Rizzo Suzuki and then it's the HM plant Honda of Michael Rutter. And again, Emmett's not really close enough to make that pass, and that surprises me somewhat on Michael Rutter. So the Monster Mob Ducati's got to wait again. And I reckon he's going to try it up the hill here. The Ducati drives like mad from here, but he's going to try it in the hardest place for me to pass because of that river. I'm yeah. going to turn one. He's going into territory that I wouldn't want to be relying on the front end for, and he's done it. He's done it. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that was a brave old mood. He really committed to that right back at the hairpin. He certainly was. <laughs> certainly, as you're out braking a rider, plus you've got to turn in still on the brakes, and if you've out someone, you really have to be confident. But he pulled off. 
and drive across the river. You would think that's where he's going to line up JR. It looks like where he's at his strongest, but we've got a load of bike markers in front of us now. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see who comes through them. I expect Hayden to be merciless. Yes. <laughs> Here's Kyle Price, first of all, and Hayden, he's not going to be messed around by a load of bike markers. He's, he's going to get some of the hairpin noise. Yeah, he's going to get some. Look at Sean Evans down the inside, JR. James Buckingham is on bike 56. Oh, oh and he's got JR down into the hairpin. Well, bike markers really taking the eye of some of the riders and of course trying to pick your way through them is a nightmare James Hayden's done pretty well but he the biggest well. winner of the hairpin has been Sean Emmett Sean Emmett has made that move absolutely perfect he certainly has he's been held up a little bit there at turn one coming down Duffy's dip but James Hayden looks like he's going to get oh, into McIntyre nicely perfect. done James perfect. Hayden then slides underneath into McIntyre, so that really has given Hayden a really, really good advantage on lap 22 yeah. of the 25, and I think that's a crucial part here. We're into the closing stages of this race. James Hayden could be on, dare I say it, for a win, or it's going to be one of the most dramatic last couple of laps we have ever seen, as Emmett just builds close. In fact, I think Emmett has got plenty of time to do it. Oh, well, Sean Emmett can smell that win, and he's got a clear track in front of him now, and we know he's got half a second. A laugh on these guys, so there's every chance he can still catch James Hayden. Well, I'm going to remind you, Neil, as I often do, uh, think rider of the day will be something that we'll be looking to you to uh, pick fairly soon. I don't fancy uh, 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 your I options are pretty good. There's a, I mean, you've got that man Hayden who uh, will we'll have, if he can make it, this uh, win to go with his second place. That's a great ride from Sean Emmett. Man Hayden's looking good. He has been known to lead the race at Mallory Park. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. I wish maybe you I just won't say it. Don't say it. No, yeah, I just won't say that. I won't say that. They don't deserve it, do they? The Yamaha. They deserve. Yeah, they, they deserve, deserve. They deserve a win. They don't deserve the bit of bad luck you were about to uh, bring upon them. Yeah, and they're just catching Ian McPherson there on the ETI Ducati Shane Burns bike from last year, but Sean Emmett is closer. It's going to be down to this at the end of the day whether Emmett can make the pass. And really, the thing is with James Hayden. Shoves him a wheel up the inside. Hayden is not going to give way at all. There not is absolutely no chance of that. And he will not get the uh, kind of gentlemanly, well, not move over, but the gentlemanly room that John Reynolds might have given him. He's going to get Sean a knee in his bearing and a shoulder in his, in his handlebars. Sean Emmett's best passing spot is at the next corner. I'm not sure he's close enough on this lap to do anything. Well, it depends on how much the back markers hold up James Hayden at the end of the day. This First is... up is Ian McPherson. This is really getting now biting now. And Emmett has closed right in. Blue flag being waved frantically. But who for, you might ask? Through goes Hayden. Emmett has been held up oh, in the middle of the corner there, by yeah. McPherson. McPherson has just held him up. He got a face full of water there from James Hayden as he passed. Oh, and Emmett has just about managed to do it up over the chicane now. Kianari moves to one side, sticks his hand out. It's Kieran Clark on bike 74. Then we're coming into the territory of uh, even more back markers. Whoa! Oh, nicely Kieran done, James. Clark. Well, James... I shot him again there. Yeah, Sean Emmett did, but James had to force that under him. That is... Uh, what a force of here. Number 15, <laughs> Sam Cork, is the next privateer about to be swamped by these two battling away for the race win. Now, this is Sean Emmett's best chance. And he's got to do it. It's turn last, one. this last lap when they come across the line. So he's Sean got Emmett, a chance. He hasn't got a chance just there. He's too far back at that particular point, and the back marker may even come across him yet. John Kirk, I mean, 16. Is he going to get in the way? No, he's not at the moment. I think Hayden just had his line actually taken by John Kirkham, but John Kirkham. Well, Willie realises this is where Hayden's great at passing and he puts it under Kirkham. That's Sean Emmett has got it Hayden. sorted. He's got it sorted. Emmett's got a real struggle now because it's difficult to move out of the way. Out of chicane and Kirkham cannot. He's going to find himself in the middle of the, the corner and that's going to hold up Emmett. So, James Hayden's wife, Joe, looking, well, biting her fingernails. We are on that last lap, as if I needed to remind you at the moment. James Hayden has just about got a quarter of a mile to hold on. He comes out of his, he's down towards Taylor Chicane, Taylor Hairpin. If he can hold on in the back there, was Paula Smart as well. So the girls are watching in the Yamaha camp. Bottom gear now, power up the hill. It's going to be the first win ever for the Virgin Mobile R1 Yamaha. James Hayden has done it. He has created a fairy tale out of a damp squib. Fantastic race there from James Hayden. What a celebration there will be in the Virgin Mobile team. That's the biggest bonus any of those boys can have. A kiss from this man's missus is certainly worthwhile. James Hayden has taken the win. It's been a long time coming for James. He rode, of course, for the Foggy Patronus racing team in World Superbike. Found himself out of a job this year. No fault of his own. He's always been a trier, always been a thoroughly nice fella. And uh, really, this year, I've seen a real change in James Hayden.
to the end of the year now. He came in as a substitute for Steve Plater, but now he is a permanent rider to the end of the year for the Virgin Mobile Samsung uh, Team Yamaha. It's all except that it is a Yamaha, of course. It was a brand new bike this year. It caught out Ron Mack's team somewhat, and they haven't been able to put it on the podium until James Hayden has done it. And uh, a bird out in front of the grandstand at uh, Taylor's Chicago. Just a few miles up the road. James Hayden, what a hero. And I uh, have to twist, I don't think, my uh, co-commentator's arm as far as rider of the day is concerned. But we'll get confirmation on that in a minute. Neil McKenzie's still deliberating. Hayden then, by four tenths of a second from a resurgent and charging Sean Emmett. John Reynolds, a good third place for him. His, well, championship is still well and truly alive because he beat the man he's got to. That's Michael Rudder who finished fourth. Yukio Kagayama fifth. Scott Smart only sixth, he'll be disappointed with that. John McGuinness in seventh, Craig Coxall eighth. Dean Thomas then, whew, qualified in ninth place, finished in ninth place. I wouldn't want to go and see him at this particular point. Leading privateer, the Superbike Cup winner of the day, James Ellison. John Kirkham pushing him all the way though in second place in the Superbike Cup. 10th and 11th overall in the race. Kieran Clark 12th, Sam Court 13th, Ryoichi Kianari, another disappointment in 14th place. And Dennis Hobbs 15th. James Buckingham, another privateer, just on the end of our leaderboard. John Reynolds then extends his lead now to a hole. Well, whatever it is, my mathematics never that good, but he has extended his lead over John Reynolds from Michael Rudder. Yukio Kagayama still there in third place, but Sean Emmett is closing. 206 to 208, Scott Smart, 199, Dean Thomas, Ryuichi Kim.